What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Excuse me for this little delay. As I mentioned in the community post yesterday, my neighbor's dog wanted to join the party and I only realized his audible barking on my recording when I was about to finish editing. So I had to re-record basically the entire video with the windows strictly closed this time. Today's set is a quite unusual vehicle for the first sight. This is the 42139 Old Terran vehicle. So, for me it looks like a quad that has an extra pair of wheels attached to the rear. But can you name a 6th wheeled vehicle a quad, since that refers to having 4 wheels? Anyway, let's stick to the term ATV, as that includes 4 wheelers and 6 wheelers as well, like this one. The front of the box shows the ATV in the forest, and we can already see the highlight of the set, the Technic Chainsaw. On the back of the box we get another view, and some very promising details about the features, but let's not spoil them before opening the box. The set has 764 pieces, the price is 75 euros or 80 dollars, a rare occasion where the euro number is lower, and it will be available officially from the 1st of March, although I've seen some lucky folks being able to grab it here and there already. There are 5 numbered bags inside with 3 wielding phases, an unnumbered bag with the tires and rims, the sticker sheet and the manual. This is an unlicensed set, so there's nothing exciting in the manual. Here is the part list if you are interested, now let's start building. The building process begins with a cute little two-cylinder flat engine that is still pretty wobbly at this stage, but with the help of some additional parts and some alignment, it gets stabilized quickly and it runs pretty smoothly. We are really not wasting our time, right on top of the engine here's a very simple gearbox mechanism with two different gear ratios and a neutral state in the center. Here's a quick demonstration with this battery box and motor, please note these are not part of the set. In this state, the powered up motor's output is geared up, so the engine runs faster. Here we are in neutral, so the engine doesn't run. And here we have a 1 to 1 gearing ratio, so the engine runs slower compared to the other gear. Here are the two different gearings side by side, you can see the speed difference of the pistons. Here comes the assembly that has the switch for a little gearbox. This might be, by the way, the smallest set with a gearbox since the 42048 race cart that was released in 2016. The building sequence of this assembly is a bit challenging. Since the second L-beam is not connected with a pin, you need to pay attention to a lot of things to stay together before you secure all these with the orange piece. So what's going on with that rubber band there? Yeah, you guessed it right, this will be a ratchet mechanism. It can be rotated only in one direction. And now we have the rope with the hook as well, so you can see the ratchet in action. You can wind it up and it holds the rope, then you can release it and do it again. Just take a look at this impressively dense build so far, it's really a delight to see such a technique set after those huge hollow shells. I really like it. You definitely need to focus how to fit the parts in the empty spaces. This white Excel connector hasn't been in a technique set in the past 20 years, and the last one was the Technic R2D2. Does it need to be white? Absolutely not. So I think we will see soon a set where its color actually matters. This is how the steering will work without any gears involved. This is definitely not the first small scale set where we see this solution. Once it's in place, you can see how the vehicle will be able to steer and also have a suspended front axle. An unusual move in Technic, just put it there until the next parts arrive. Here they are, now it's fixed in place. Time to attach the shock absorbers on both sides. The articulation of the front axle looks pretty cool. After a few reinforcements here and there, this is the end of phase 1. So, this is how your face looks like at 10 pm when you check the first 50 pages of the manual like 3 times to figure out where these pieces were missed, just to realize they were not part of the set, but this is your usual speed indicator and you took it out of the powered up motor. In the second phase we start to build one of the rear axles, it has a differential as well. We build the same structure twice for the two rear axles. We get more of the white connector pieces, seems to be a promising parts pack as well. The color coding of the white and red connectors help with the orientation of the differentials, it's important to have them facing against each other. As you see, rotating only one side on an axle will make the other side turn the opposite direction, but that's normal, that's how differentials work. But if you rotate both sides on the same axle, then the other axle should also turn the same direction. You can also verify here the connection to the engine, if you switch from neutral to either of the gears, then the engine should run when you rotate both sides of an axle. Here comes the support for the rear suspension, you don't see telephone headsets around here too often. We've built a neat little linkage here at the rear, this one will operate the tipper function of the cargo bed with this lever. 
Time to add the rear shock absorbers, there's really not much space there to slide those axles in place. So, here's the functional rear suspension. The two rear axles have a similar setup to the front, but the fixed end is at the bottom and the moving two module long beams are at the top. For the first side, I thought the phone handsets are there to act as stoppers, but as I see the fully compressed state of the shock absorber on the other side stops the movement sooner, so it's more like a decorative piece. After the installation of the rear lights, the last item to add in phase 2 is the base of the bed. Let's see the last phase. We add the lights and a cool bull bar to the front, then a similar structure goes on top with a stickered system piece closing it. The sticker sheet was not really used so far, but that changes now quickly. Here comes the seat, then the handlebar with this unusual base structure. The whole thing is rotated by 45 degrees when you want to put it in place. But thanks to the clever usage of knob gears in the steering system, it has to be at 45 degrees, so at the end it is perfectly lined up with the wheels. And the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. We have been waiting for this for so long, or endless complaints were not meaningless after all. This is finally a LEGO Technic gearbox with a correct engine speed linked to the gears. If you did not build all the Technic sets with gearboxes in the past several years, then I can perfectly imagine your confused phase at the moment. Why is this a big deal? LEGO usually does not indicate the exact gears or the gear switching direction on their gearboxes, but when they do, and even if they don't do, but we know how the gear sequence is supposed to be, then the related engine speed was wrong. It was slower in lower gears and faster in higher gears, the exact opposite as it is supposed to be. I had very long debates regarding this in the comment section, but to make it clear again, let's say you drive your car at a constant speed. If it's in first gear and the engine speed is, let's say, 2000 RPM, if you don't accelerate and you switch to second gear, then the engine speed will drop to, let's say, 1000 RPM, depending on your gearing. If you don't believe me, try it. So, this means the engine should be actually slower in higher gears if the wheel speed does not change. This was not the case on the Defender, not the case on the BMW motorbike, but finally we have justice in this little set. My sleepless nights are over, there's hope after all. Thank you LEGO. After some paneling on the bed, all we have left are the wheels and tires, lots of them. Pro tip, if you are doing a review or simply posting on social media about your latest LEGO Technic build and you want to have dozens of comments, make sure to put on one of the tires the other way around. The end result is guaranteed. But we are not finished yet. First we add some logs, and then comes this little masterpiece, a cleverly designed small work of art, the icing on the cake, the cherry on top of our ATV, the functional chainsaw. So guys, here is our finished set, and I can say without the slightest hesitation, this is the best Technic set of the year so far for me. Okay, yeah, the competition was not particularly strong, but still. It looks great, works great, and above all, for a decent price, we get tons of fun and play functions. Really, I love how dense this thing is, fully packed of functions in this very small form factor. Not being licensed is a big plus, no restrictions, no negotiations with the partner, just pure technic. Steering works well, access to the gear selector is okay, we have a correct gear sequence. Okay, sorry, I still get way more excited than I should be. The winch has a nice ratchet mechanism, a cool attention to detail, the seat stops the release of the ratchet fairly quickly as there's not much space in there, but it's still just enough to allow a smooth operation. The tipping function also works fine, so it's very difficult to find anything to complain about. If I really want to highlight something, then it's the suspension. It's nice and bouncy if you move the body around, but the whole thing is so small and lightweight, you cannot really see the effect of the suspension on obstacles unless you really try to push the whole vehicle down. And there's no Bebo there unfortunately, but I'm sure the community will help with that. So to sum it up, best technique set so far in 2022 without a doubt. Look, functions, parts, correct gearbox, everything. And of course, the chainsaw. Please go and buy one. No, buy two, buy three. I will do that. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Please share them in the comment section. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button and ring the bell. I've been super busy to film a whole bunch of sets coming in March, so there's still a lot in the pipeline. See you next time. Bye-bye.